Boom! According to that, I am live. Welcome, this is Tokyo Tonight. My name is Hiko Simon. I know the room is a bit echoey, but uh, I think the sound is actually better off the... Um, well, maybe it's not, but I just tried the headset and uh, the indicator said the volume was quite low, so I'm going to stick with the echoey room uh, webcam mic today. Thanks to everybody who just joined me for the uh, pre-party, not really an after-party this week, but uh, the warm-up. It was kind of cool. I just wanted to go through and practice on a preset mix, but... Um, Bit of a mess at the end trying to go through the uh, tracks people are suggesting but always fun so thanks for keeping me company for that it is 11 30 p.m uh, here in J here in australia um but um yeah 10 30 p.m japan standard time and uh a little bit late not no major technical issues so far a few minor ones so i feel like uh that's all the thing by the way that painting behind there my mum paints that's that's one she's got tons anyway um, so yeah, today's my final day in Brisbane. I'm flying to Sydney tomorrow. A lot of people message worried about the um, attack in Sydney. Of course, the news has come up about that. One, I'm not in Sydney. I'm going there tomorrow. And two, it was in a shopping mall in a suburb of Sydney that I'm not going to. And three, it was a it was a crazy person, not terrorism, not anything like that. I mean, still bloody horrible, but um, you know, sort of thing that could happen, honestly, anywhere. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that was a thing that happened yesterday, but it's been a really, really good week. I've been on my own, um, for the, for the week, but it's been great. I've been trail running and going to the beach and stuff and, uh, seeing, seeing some friends did a, did a bit of a meetup. So, um, shout out to Viv and Dimitri, who I got to meet up with, uh, the other day. Um, so yeah, it was really cool meeting some people as well as a friend, Nick, who's lived here for a while, who I knew from Japan. So I met a few people from Japan while I was here. Uh, while I'm in Sydney, I'm going to be working. So um, I, I don't actually know if there would be a meetup crowd in Sydney. Maybe let me know if there is, but uh, I'm probably going to be really busy for the whole week uh, from when I fly out there tomorrow. But yeah, back to Japan Saturday. So when you see me this time next week, I will be back in Japan. Um, yeah, I was going through the sort of topics for this week earlier. You might have seen me on Twitter. Um, so um, I've got some of the topics there in the title. See, so make sure I get through them. Uh, Kishida visited Japan. Um, a lot of talk today about a sort of a viral photo of some uh, misbehaving foreigners. And uh, just as I was ready to throw a rock, I realized, oh, I've definitely done that. So I couldn't do it. Um, talk of toilets and so on. So lot, lots to talk about, but uh, lots, of, lot, lots of stuff there. As always, that and your comments and requests. Let's see who's in, in the uh, comments already, according to StreamYard. So I've got Lara, who was just with us before on the pre-show. So good to see you there in the chat. We've got Eric Bailey. Let's go. Glad that you were here so that we can proceed. Indeed. We've got Kerberos Tenchi, who was also in the pre-show, as was Eric Bailey. Actually, everyone was. So uh, yeah, good to see you, Kerberos Tenchi. And thank you for the thank you for the uh, track requests. We've got Tudom, uh, Netflix theme. Good to see us. Lake Manson, good to see you again. Quinn Rankin, hello indeed. Good to see you. We've got uh, Dan H, the last, I uh, love the last track, the, la the Latin dance track. Which is uh, Guantanamera, not as, as opposed to Guantanamora. <laughs> I don't know. I, I couldn't tell it was a song request. I thought it was like somebody shouting Geronimo, shouting, jumping out of an airplane. So it helps when you're putting up song requests if you put the artist and the song. So I can tell it's not just an exclamation. When someone's saying Bebop Baluba, I was like, oh, did I just miss something in the, in the, in the chat? But, oh, that was a song request. But, yeah, yeah, the, the Latin dance track was indeed good. I also really liked at the end the Otis Redding. It was, didn't sound like a version I was used to, but having that with the um, Eminem rap at the end also came out really well. So, you know, you have these happy discoveries when you do random tracks like that. So, yeah, that worked out really well. So, um, as always, it's always fun playing around with that. I'll be back, of course, with the proper mixer, so I, I won't be scrambling on my phone like this um next week but um yeah always fun so thank you for helping me with that we've got yoni in the chat our man from finland moi indeed moi good to see you uh moi yes we have people shouting moi we're all in finish now uh black tengu from greece good to see howdy indeed good to have you in here we've got uh, sadiq from florida good to have you in here hello australia australia says hello back to you good to see you in the chat uh and uh sir simon says pb good to see you pb uh, you're only suffering from a bad Wi-Fi connection. I'm suffering from a bad Wi-Fi internet country. Uh, it's possible that net will just drop out. Sometimes that happens in Australia. It's actually been reasonably good on this trip, but uh, it's definitely not Japan. So I must tell you all about the butter. I've been having butter. I've been having ice cream. I've been having dairy products. In fact, I actually discovered what a halloumi burger is today. I thought uh, I thought first burger in a, in a while, other than the Naughty by Burger burger that I had, I thought I'd try an Australian burger. I was all sort of set after going swimming in the ocean today and halfway driving back to Brisbane. I ordered, a, I saw the thing and it said like mint and, uh, you know, feta cheese and 
cream and so on on a burger. I thought, geez, that sounds really good. So I ordered a halloumi burger where I discovered that halloumi, a, a halloumi burger doesn't actually have meat. It's literally just fried cheese. So that was extremely disappointing. Um, but um, yeah, I've been having all sorts of dairy, including uh, actually at home here, although my mother is Australian, she's good enough to get New Zealand cheese and New Zealand butter, uh, anchor butter and mainland cheese. Um, if you ever get a chance, it's cheddar. So I've tried to convince like French friends in Tokyo that New Zealand has good cheese, but you know, they're never going to be convinced anything cheddar is good cheese, which is maybe understandable, but uh, taste of taste of my growing up. So I've definitely enjoyed that here in Australia. No shortages indeed. So there we go. We've got a comment there from Eric Bailey. Any indication when Australia is going to take over New Zealand? I mean, it's right there for the taking. Well, I think you've got it backwards. Uh, we've, New Zealand is open at any time to accepting uh, applications for a third island. You know, we've got a North Island and a South Island. And Australia would make a pretty neat sort of a West Island. So, yeah, we're, we're willing to accept Australia at any time. Um, you know, for what it's worth, Australia, as a, as a hilarious practical joke, did write New Zealand into its constitution when it defines the, 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 the constitution of Australia, when it defines the territory of the Commonwealth and includes all the states of Australia, which it lists out as Tasmania, New South Wales, Victoria, uh, Queensland, South Australia, West Australia, not Northern Territory, because that's not a state, but they do include New Zealand, which, you know, New Zealand specifically said, we do not want to be included in Australia. <laughs> you know, we want to have a decent rugby team. But yet they wrote us in. It's kind of understandable, but they don't get to claim it. But uh, I would be treason, treason, of course. I would be all for uh, having a West Island uh, for New Zealand. So there you go. Um, I'd be all for them joining, actually. When I was a kid, there practically was no difference. New Zealanders could work, live and work in Australia unrestricted. Australia's kind of closed things up a bit more, and New Zealand's kind of gone its own way. But it's a shame, you know, because I, in the scheme of the world, they are pretty similar countries. I mean, yeah, you know. Uh, all of that stuff. So, um, yeah, um, I'm trying to find where I was before I've lost my place. That was from Eric Bailey. So, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, Australia could probably just take us over just with all the poisonous animals, pretty much. If they just dropped some spiders, they wouldn't even have to be poisonous. If they were from Australia, everyone in New Zealand would just assume that they were poisonous and surrender immediately. We don't have any poisonous animals, snakes, spiders, anything in New Zealand. So you're right. Uh, but what can we do? I think we should. I think we should decide who gets to be in charge based on a rugby game, anyway. Uh, hello, Australia. Oh, I see. So you're saying hello to Australia. Yeah, Australia definitely says hello back. Time to talk about toilets. We are going to get to toilets. It's important stuff. Uh, Odie Junior. Good morning. Bada boom. Good to see you, Odie Junior. Long time and well, not long time. I saw you last week as well. But good to see you back in the regular uh, stuff there. No problems. No problems. I no. I was confused. So I apologise for my confusion. Uh, and also for saying Guantanamera. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they weren't teaching them to salsa in Guantanamo. So yeah, that's probably inappropriate. Uh, we've got Believe in Yourself. Welcome, our man from Canada. Good to have you there in the chat. Um, jo Yoni mentioning that you met a local, uh, a Japanese local staff member from New Zealand's embassy. Uh, she had a way stronger accent than Hiko Simon. My accent's gone to hell. Even here in Australia, uh, I like where they say, where you're from? And I say New Zealand and they're like, no. So even when Australians are disowning me as a New Zealander, it's kind of depressing. But uh, I, I, I can't repeat myself 10 times, so I can't speak with too much of a Kiwi accent. I do notice when I'm back in Australia, I could do the stream with an Australian accent if you wanted. Um, when you hear it everywhere, it, it's kind of, it's easy to pick up. And I'm sure if I went back to New Zealand, um, I don't know, you just you just sound like you're having a bit more fun. You just, uh, you pick it up pretty easily. You just go higher and you, I don't know, you sort of... Um, move your mouth in a certain way, you draw out your vowels. It's not hard to do, but uh, New Zealand is actually harder because everything is, we, only, we don't have any vowels. We just have like two two vowel sounds in New Zealand. It's a pretty simple accent. Uh, but you wouldn't understand a word I'm saying if I did it properly. So yeah, um, mum always knows best, says Erin. Uh, that is definitely true. <laughs> Burgers without meat are a sin against all good things in this world. Yeah, I mean, you'd assume if it's a burger, it's got, it's like, if, if it's a cheese burger, you don't assume that the patty is salted cheese. So I, I did feel a little bit deceived. Um, cheese matters, though. Uh, you don't ever want to ask where's the beef, etc. Yes, the old uh, Wendy's ad. Shubas, glad that you can make it. Shubas, hope that you are enjoying a nice cup of coffee there in Panama. Uh, clandestine mission from the motherland in the south. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so all of that, uh, could New Zealand procure, just procure a better submarine? Um, no, we could not, we could not procure anything. We don't have any money, maybe on a, on a really generous loan, which we don't have to repay perhaps. Um, 
uh, I would think there's a lot of trade between Australia and New Zealand, no invasive species. New Zealand and Australia are both extremely paranoid about um, protecting our agriculture. So uh, even within Australia, crossing straight state lines, they have a, they have restrictions sometimes on um, you know uh, bringing apples, for example. A lot of states prohibit uh, bringing apples across because they're worried about diseases and stuff that exist in one country. So we've done a fairly good job. I mean, they occasionally find redbacks and stuff in New Zealand, but um, yeah, they've actually they're very they're, they're, the the border control is very tight on both countries in terms of inspection and quarantining for agricultural stuff. So yeah, um, Australia did lose to a bunch of emu. Yeah, I mean, if they sent those emu to New Zealand, we would be screwed. We have the Weta, the bug, and the studio. Yes, PB, you know very well. Uh, Weta is awesome. Of course, they made Avatar and Lord of the Rings and all that. And the bug is like an enormous. I mean, again, because New Zealand doesn't have any real predators, even for insects. That you know, this cricket that just forgot how to move and grew to be like this big. Uh, and they're like again, like the tuatara. They've been around like since the dinosaurs. So pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah, you know, I immediately regretted uh, saying that I could do an Australian accent. I could do an Australian accent. I could talk like a talk if I was around a bunch of Australians. But um, I don't know. You just go higher in pitch and try not to sound. <laughs> I won't say it. I won't say it. It's a fun accent, though. It's a fun accent. I could do it. I could do it if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, my mum, fortunately, is Australian, but doesn't have too strong an Australian accent. But I do get a little bit of the rhythm of it when I get back here, so it's fun. Uh, Saint it's good to see you. Good morning, New York. Uh, indeed, Sunday morning, uh, spring-like day, which is a good thing because it is spring there. We've got Quint Rankin. Did I uh, lower the resolution of my feed? Um, it is 720p. If using the software, it's 720p, so that does lower the resolution. If that makes the Twitter window hard to see, let me see if I can do something about this to make the Twitter thing bigger. I don't think I can. So it is 720p. It's not uh, 1080p. So that might be a thing. Well, seems okay again. Okay, glad to hear that. Um, the emu war. The emu war is a real thing. It's a real thing. Google it. Seriously, or YouTube video it. There are there are accounts of it that um, the Australian military was defeated by emus in Australia, and and not not like by the, the the Australian army tripping over itself. It was actually like beaten up uh, by, by the emus. I mean, seriously, animals in Australia are just not nothing to be messed with. Um, yeah, Kerberos Tanshi knows the history indeed. Um, so uh, <laughs> as you were listening to the Sydney police spokeswoman, uh, she sounded so positive about everything because everything goes up at the end of sentences. Uh, Kiwis do that all the time, but Kiwis sort of do it because we're not confident and we're, we're asking somebody to validate. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to do the Aussie accent. It would be, um, <laughs> I'm in an Australian house. I, I could, I'll speak with a little bit of an Australian accent every now and again, but uh, I mean, I'm doing it right now. It's not that different, but uh, yeah, I mean, definitely I'm, I'm not speaking with a real Kiwi accent, so it's not that far off, but even as an Aussie accent, it's not that different. So there you go. That's that's. This is Australian me, so I can do that for a while. The rampaging wild camels, yes, indeed. Diverse landscapes in New Zealand. Uh, as you remember the TV series Hercules, a lot of TV shows get filmed in New Zealand because it's like California. You've got every landscape there. And the government just pays, gives tax breaks and gives Hollywood whatever it wants to film there just so that people notice us. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, Yeah, New Zealand frequently gets left out of uh, UN programs by accident and off-world maps uh, just because of where we are. It's probably for the best, but uh, yes, yes, we, we love having TV shows made there, so that is the thing. Um, so yeah, we are 40, it's 47 minutes past uh, the hour, so I am going to jump into topics. There are actually, just going through tonight, catching up a bit, there are a surprisingly, there are a lot of topics. So um, let's go in. There are going to be apparently four terabyte SD cards uh, next year, 2025. Um, and this just reminded me, I remember years and years ago, um, I remember talking with folks from Toshiba who were investing in every project everywhere around the world that would use high, high capacity SD cards because that was a big part of their business and they were having trouble figuring out um, how, to, how to sell like 32 gigabyte and 64 gigabyte memory cards. And they were investing in having, you know, video and stuff. And I remember talking with um, people who worked in the SD card memory division of Toshiba telling me that frankly, the problem is that once you get to 32 gigabytes, no one's ever going to use that much memory. <laughs> and so they're just desperately investing in every imaginable scenario to, to make them useful. 
Um, it reminds me of the, the 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 joke, which is apparently a false story, by the way. It's a it's a, it was from a satirical newspaper, but it, there was a story about the U.S. Patent Office head who said that there's no more patents. Everybody, all the ideas in the world have been documented. It's a little bit like that, the idea that uh, you can never run out of memory. Uh, right now, I've just seen the other day the camera that I use for running. Uh, the the Insta 361 X2. Currently, there's an X3 out, but I believe I'm hoping that there's going to be an X4, which is going to be higher resolution. Which, if there's a higher resolution camera, I'm going to seriously think about buying it. And that's going to be 8K. It's going to shoot 8K 360 video. And if you get that, you're going to fill up a four terabyte card. Well, not rapidly. Four terabytes actually will give you some breathing room. But I'll tell you what, the 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 512 gigabyte card that I'm using right now does fill up. So um, yeah, yeah, I, I will take all the terabytes, frankly. And actually, the idea that you could back up like a pretty decent amount of, um, you know, with all the AI training, with all the sort of um, high, people always finding ways to uh, use up more memory and so on. So SD cards, I think that'd be pretty awesome anyway. So uh, looking forward to the four terabyte memory cards coming up. Um, uh, who will watch HK, uh, 8K? So sorry, the thing about 8, 8K for a 360 camera, when you're shooting every angle, basically every, the, so the, the, the problem with 360 cameras when you're shooting everything in a globe is if you look at everything all at once, the full 8K, everything looks weird. But uh, so what you actually do is you zoom in on one part of that image at any given time, which means you're only looking at like one ninth. If you imagine the whole screen divided into like, like nine TVs all put together, which means that you're kind of, there's a problem that you're wasting at any given time, um, eight nights of all the video. Uh, you're shooting uh, all this video to only see, ever see one ninth of it at any given time, which means that the only video which you really edit with is one ninth of the resolution. So the current 360 camera that I use is a 5.6K camera, but I never use 5.6K resolution. I edit it down to a block of the, what I want to, to show. And that's only about 1080p, and frankly, it looks kind of blocky. Like uh, it looks good on mobile, but it doesn't look good on PC. But if it's 8K all around, I think you'll get something closer to um, full HD. You know, on one ninth of it, which is um, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's it's really wasteful uh, of resolution. You never use all of that. I don't want an 8K like for a regular camera or for a regular shot. I agree. I've got no use for that. But the idea that you could do a 360 shot of everything and go back later and then pull out a high resolution video is pretty cool to me. Uh, and that's what I'm enjoying doing. Um, Microsoft will fill, make a, will, will figure out a way to make the OS fill out all that space. They will, uh, yeah, yeah. The uh, that it kills me how with um, Windows like system files, how how much of your hard disk it steals. My home computer, which is pretty old, it still runs great, but it's I'm running out of disk space, and whenever I look it up, it's all this, um, it's all system files from Windows, you know. Uh, so yeah, and flushing that out is a pain. So that is indeed true. Uh, so yes, it has to compartmentalize. Yes, it cannot be transmitted. Um, yeah, there'll probably be standards that'll get to that. But again, you get a really high capacity memory card with high speed writing and stuff like that. Again, for things like shooting with uh, 360 cameras, it's appealing. I, I agree. There isn't. There aren't other use cases I can think of. But yeah, DJ Sunny sign up. Glad that you can make it. Uh, peace and love indeed. Uh, back at Kochi from Australia. So what else have we got? Uh, apparently this week, um, NASA featured all of the lunar rovers that they're proposing for uh, their, their lunar program. And uh, in the meantime, Toyota is like basically going to send an L Grand. Well, actually, I don't want to get this wrong. L Grand is a Nissan, I think. So what is it? It's the, um, what is the Toyota version of the um, L Grand? It's like the R, oh, I forget the name of it. But anyway, Toyota is sending, uh, a luxury people mover up to the moon uh, for the uh, Artemis lunar program. And uh, in exchange for that, they're going to be getting seats apparently on the, so Japan is going to have astronauts as well as America on all the lunar missions. Uh, and in America, they're covering this as um, in exchange for lunar rover, Japan will get seats on moon, moon landing missions. But I'd always say that, yeah, if they lend you their car, you should drive them around, right? Um, sounds fair to me. Um, and plus, yeah, you, you can better, and because it's going to be fully, uh, a fully pressurized rover, um, it's going to actually allow people to like drive for a long time, move all over the surface. It'll be like a mobile lab. So um, it'll be pretty cool. Although the one thing I wonder about, about this sort of thing is when you have these sort of pressurized, it's the same, I guess, with the landers. Um, apparently the regolith, the soil, the dust on the moon 
is really nasty. It's because there's no erosion. All of the sand particles are like little little razor. Um, they're like little razors, basically. And this was a problem like for the astronauts or whatever. They couldn't get it all off the, the spacesuits. So they'd sort of try to brush it off when they got into the, uh, into the lunar module and so on. But you can't help but bring some of that sand in because it's completely jagged and sharp and... Um, yeah, it comes into the it comes into the air system and astronauts breathe it and it's like toxic chemicals and it clings into the, it's like it's like inhaling razor blade plates so it's not good for the astronauts either. So I hope that that uh, of all the problems that they have on the moon, figuring out how to stop regolith basically um, uh, getting everywhere is going to be one of the problems. Um, sand, you know, I think uh, Anakin said it best. Uh, full of fun. <laughs> I've been enjoying the sand here in Australia, but uh, definitely different to Lunar Regolith. Um, uh, Kerberos says here, it would be cool and fitting if Hyundai built an electric version of the Staria van to drive around on the moon. I think I know what you're talking about, and yes, it would actually look kind of cool. Um, I'd prefer the Toyota still, but uh, the old, uh, I think snobbery about Toyota being so superior to Hyundai. Hyundai's making better cars, and I do like the designs as well, so I think that's a fair comment. Kerberos says Dan H., the Japan... Japanese space program doesn't have the best reputation with successful missions. Hopefully their recent bad luck doesn't rub off on. Well, um, the, there was a private company that had a terrible, um, had a disastrous launch. The, the private space industry has not been doing too great. JAX has been doing okay. The H3, I think, launched okay. I mean, they've, they've, they've had a lot of uh, trial and failure getting to the H3. But uh, the lunar mod, uh, of all the lunar landers, Japan... Did the best. Uh, their, their, their probe is still working. The US uh, venture that it got up there, which was a private company, of course, um, didn't do so well. So I don't know. I don't think they're that bad. But uh, yeah, yeah, um, certainly. Uh, hoping that Toyota can do a good job, at least, of the lunar car. Um, they become aliens. They, I guess they will become aliens when they're up there. Um, interesting story. So uh, I, every week I do check in on uh, the Japan Expert Analysis channel on YouTube and I check in with uh, Langley Squire's sort of weekly political briefing. And the, the big news this week, of course, other than Kishida's visit to the US, is that this whole uh, slush fund scandal, Kishida sort of decided himself, how are they going to punish people who um, uh, took... Uh, <laughs> by the way, I'm distracted by the comment from PB. Have I seen any UAPs in Australia? I still call them UFOs because I'm old-fashioned. And to me, every everything here is a UAP. <laughs> if you, you should see the fruit bats here in the summer that fly over. They are, they are literally every single fruit bat in Australia is a UAP as far as I'm concerned. And it's terrifying. And I would surrender. And I, I, I welcome uh, our new fruit bat overlords. Um, yeah. I don't know. It feels like everything here qualifies. So coming back on the slush fund scandal, I've told you all about it before, but uh, it's, it's this deal where basically the, the LDP was sort of embezzling money from uh, fundraising parties and not declaring the money for it and doing it systematically across all the big sort of factions. Um, where basically uh, over 90 lawmakers were guilty of breaking the law of literally not just the election fundraising law, but literally they were embezzling the money and not declaring it and pocketing it and everything including the Prime Minister and his faction. Well, the Prime Minister decided that uh, in order for the public to stop, currently the government approval rating is 16%. In spite of that, the largest opposition party approval rating is 3.8%. <laughs> so that's for some context. The uh, None of the above is currently polling above 40% support. <laughs> so that's just how messed up Japanese politics is. But apparently Kishida hoping to raise uh, the, the LDP support above 16%, one of the lowest... Um, in, in, in recent years. Um, he's had to decide what the punishments are for everybody. And of course, amongst all of that, uh, he, he, he designated two, well, apart from the fact that um, I've said before, uh, of the 90 people who were guilty of breaking the law for this and could still be subject to prosecution, the part, as, a, as a party, he decided to um, punish something like 40 lawmakers, only from factions that are not his. And of those, he picked out two senior leaders who sort of oversaw the, the, the embezzlement and uh, gave them the second most serious punishment. The most serious punishment is expulsion from the LDP. This was a, a strongly, uh, a strong suggestion that they should voluntarily quit the LDP as the punishment that he handed out to two people. And they had to respond by, I think, a day or two ago if they accepted the punishment and would quit or not. 
And uh, one of the one of them ex- gracefully accepted and said, "Yes, I will step down from my post and fall on my sword and take the hit for the party, so that the OEP may recover and the greater good may may you know, as he sees it, would be uh, achieved." And the other guy said, um, "No, screw that! I'm not falling on anybody's sword. Uh, Kishida can take this punishment and shove it up its own ass." So he sent a, a response back to the, the, the prime minister. Um, saying that he rejected the punishment and the government now, now the LDP is going to review the punishment. He could still be punished by the police, by the way. But he's basically saying, no, you don't, you don't. I, I'm not going to be the full guy for all of this. And uh, you know, the Kishida is a terrible person and a dictator, and he's letting himself off, and he's guilty. So he's decided that no, he's he's going to burn this MF down. He's going to set everything on fire and not fall on his sword. Which means fun times. Um, so, and even honestly, even would the public accept two people voluntarily quitting is setting, setting, settling this whole thing? I mean, absolutely not. But it's kind of funny. Even even the token punishment is apparently causing uh, screaming and upset. So there you go. <laughs> um, Shubis, thank you for the reminder there. Smash the like button. Uh, like a bold underarm. Uh, that is that is an in reference between New Zealand and Australia. Australia famously cheated in a World Cup final against New Zealand, where they did an illegal bowling style that the Australian umpires allowed to prevent New Zealand being able to score off the last ball of the game, uh, which <laughs> caused they called underarm that caused condemnation everywhere. So yes, punch the like button like it just bold underarm. Uh, that is a Enjoy that. Uh, yes, if you're liking. Uh, and if you're not liking, just click it anyway. I'd appreciate that. Um, so, yes, uh, fun story. This is a sign of the times. A 89 year old Japanese man uh, biked 600 kilometers to visit his 61 year old son. So, there's something. Uh, when, uh, this week, for the people that I've been talking to, the conversations I've been having with people here in Australia, when I've been meeting up with people, have been um, uh, health and AI. And health and AI. <laughs> AI. Um, it's kind of funny. Both uh, some of the people I've met are yeah, health professional, sort of health guru, expert, IT guy, and AI guy uh, who who does sort of health monitoring and stuff. It's all sort of interrelated, but um, uh, all all the sorts of things like how important it is to maintain muscle health so that you can so that you don't fall over and you know so on when you get older. Um, and, and I can think of the example of my own grandmother who um, nearly made it to 100 a couple of weeks short, but uh, she was like driving around um, meals on wheels and so on for um, people suffering from sort of age related diseases like dementia and so on for people who were like 30 years younger than her. Like she was driving up until about 90. And she could have kept going, but she, she, her eyesight was going bad, so she voluntarily stopped driving. But she was playing golf until her late eighties. She was then she just switched to bowls. So the idea of staying active, um, and you know, yeah, there is there are definitely situations where elderly can take care of their also elderly children. And I guess this is going to be something that's going to be increasingly normal. But uh, kind of a cool story there about this old guy. And apparently, when he got there, the son said, "Hey, why don't we go for a bicycle together?" Which I'm kind of surprised the old man didn't just slap him across the face, the son across the face. But no, apparently they did. They got along. A uh, lovely story there. So, um, yes, from the Japanese news. Random, but mark your calendars well in advance. The next total solar eclipse in Japan will be 20th September 2035 in Nagano, Nagano Tochigi Toyama. Uh, you're welcome, uh, says Aaron. People in America, did anyone get to see the eclipse? I, I saw news clips. I saw I saw video clips from people who lived in states like Texas, for example, where they were lucky and got to see it. Like Joe Scott uh, was talking a lot about that. I was listening to that in the car today. Um, but I've seen a partial solar eclipse a couple of years ago in Tokyo. Uh, in fact, you know what? I think it was it full. But yeah, I mean, actually, yeah. Well, I mean, total eclipse is really once in a lifetime. Plus, for the first time ever, people have a reason to visit Tochigi. So there you go, voted. Uh, recently just lifted from being the least attractive prefecture in Japan to the second least uh, uh, prefecture in Japan, battling with neighbor Ibaragi for who is the least attractive. Um, so uh, Tochigi, that's going to, that's going to, good for Tochigi. Anyway. Uh, Dan H asking me, did I hear the story from a university professor? Everyone in Japan will be called Sato by 2531 unless the marriage law has changed. I did see that. I didn't really think very much of it, but I saw. Um, and I'm, yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't really look deeply into it. I suppose it's a statistical. Uh, Sato is, of course, I believe the most common name in Japan. It has, 
in different years in the past, of course, when I was learning Japanese, it was Tanaka, but I think Satos have multiplied a lot better. There are, they seem to be more fertile than Tanakas. Um, but yeah, the, the, I think what he was talking about, correct me if I'm wrong, was um, the idea of being able to have multiple like hyphenated surnames or to for, for spouses to keep separate surnames. Um, I don't know necessarily, though. The thing about the Japanese marriage law is um, it, it, it mandates at the moment single surname, uh, unless you go legally get your name changed, which is what you do if you uh, marry a foreigner and you want to change your, your, your name, which you don't have to change your name if you marry a foreigner. But Japanese law requires that you adopt the family register of, of one of the two people getting married. And it doesn't, nowadays, it is most often the man, um, as it is with all other Western marriages when they take a surname. Um, but just like with Western marriages, you could choose to take the woman's name. Um, and indeed, you could um, uh, also for, um, sorry, my watch, go to, go to bed notification just went off. Um, and, and yeah, and, and, and in older times, it used to be that if you married like uh, the, 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 the daughter of the, the, the car company president or whatever, the social status, you, the, the, the higher ranked family would typically uh, be the name that you would pick. And I, I have friends who have been married and have taken their wife's family register and name. So I sort of get that, I suppose over time, Sato is going to multiply and become the most common one, but you could always just choose a different name if you don't want the same name as everybody else. Uh, and for what it's worth as well, Japan uh, is not as extreme as Korea. I think Korea is like has the fewest surnames per, per population of any country in the world. A lot of Kims, a lot of Parks. And they have a law in Korea, just to be safe, that people with the same surname are not allowed to marry each other, even though like half of the country are called Kim. Um, it's kind of funny because that's that's kind of ridiculous because uh again do genealogy you know the vast majority of your uh relatives and ancestors will not have the same surname as you yet the law in korea is you can't marry anyone with the with the even if you're genetically completely disconnected you can't marry um uh, uh, kim's can't marry kim's uh so that was that was a funny thing anyway Odie Jr. saw the eclipse. Awesome. 97% totality. Well done. Congratulations. Well, if you want to see another one, if you, if you like it so much, you want to see it again. Um, yeah, Aaron's probably already booking the tours. Uh, to <laughs> and I suggest that probably accommodation would be cheapest in uh, Tochigi. Uh, Nagano would be awesome because it would be up in the mountains and they've actually got awesome tourist facilities up there. But there we go. Um, saw a total eclipse in 2017. The eclipse was 80% in North Carolina. Wow. So lots of people seeing... Lots of eclipses there, so that's pretty good. It came over Aaron's house in Indiana, 100%. Whoa, it was even more powerful and beautiful than you expected. Uh, now you want to see another one someday. I've heard this. I've, I've seen other streamers saying that they already want to plan the next one. Like, this can't be the, the last time. Wow, so you got it overhead, over your house, 100%. And the weather was good as well. I, I heard a lot of places were sort of cloudy and stuff. Although I also heard, like, Joe Scott in Texas, it was supposed to be cloudy, but it was visible for the time that it was happening. So that's pretty cool. 90% in NYC. Well done, Sainted Sir. Wow, everybody really caught the eclipse there. So that is awesome. Um, the eclipse in 2012, um, the Tokyo Sky Tree opened. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I've, I've got photos from that. I saw a total eclipse in Tokyo 2012. Thank you for reminding me. Um, so yeah, uh, every day is total eclipse in South Florida. Uh, another total eclipse in South Florida. I, I, I suppose people are... Um, <laughs> I don't know what would be causing those visual effects, but there you go. Um, yeah, some, some research study in Japan is now suggesting if you have anger that you can't resolve, write it down on a post-it and throw it away, um, to which I suggest we're going to need a bigger post-it pad uh, if that's the case. Uh, still, if it works, I mean, there is, a, there is a technique. I can sort of understand it. Wow, that's pretty awesome there, Aaron. I'm, gl I'm glad that, that, it, uh, that, that it worked out for you. Wow, that's actually pretty awesome. You got 100% where you are as well other people watching online but yeah i sort of saw the um i saw the reactions to it and you know it, it is actually as well the science that um gets has been captured in the past around eclipses it actually confirmed the theory of relativity they needed an eclipse to be able to take measurements to sort of confirm the theory of relativity around the start of the the century um it's kind of funny the eclipses are, are like they're not just a spectacle they're associated with a lot of like hard science that, that's helped us to understand the universe they're actually really really significant events even for astronomers and when they happen now we keep having better and better instruments and so on yeah we can really do cool cool things i also heard that 
the positioning of the moon made it so that um, I think the sun is like a, at a solar maximum. So you can actually, you could really see flares and stuff coming off the sun this time. It looked, looked really cool. It actually looked cooler than the 2012 uh, one that I saw here in Tokyo anyway. So uh, what else is going on? Um, so when, when, when Kishida was in America, uh, some of the stuff when he was in America, he was there with the Philippine president, Marcos, um, the one without, without the wife with the shoes, uh, the son. Uh, they were there and they were all being friends. And, you know, Japan saying what Japan says, basically, we are best friends with America. We are BFFs. And, uh, yeah, screw those Chinese guys. We love America. And pretty much just saying that over and over. He didn't you know. I mean, look, for me, Japan said they want to be an AUKUS. They want to, like, um, you know, they want to share Japanese technology with um, you know, Australia, UK, US. Uh, by the way, New Zealand also uh, trying to get back into that club, even though New Zealand kind of decided it wasn't going to have defense relationships with America anymore over the whole nuclear weapons and nuclear power issue. But um, yeah, yeah. So Japan basically, uh, as usual with Kishida, not, not a lot that was really substantive other than we want to be friends with everybody and we agree with everything that you probably think and we're going to say it for you. China sucks. Um, so they said that sort of thing, and um, China apparently called in Japan, sort of diplomats in China, and said they're very upset that Japan expressed concern um, globally about uh, China's uh, uncontrolled military buildup and uh, territorial aggression uh, against the Philippines and other countries in Southeast Asia. And China's very upset that Japan would mention that. Um, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I'm very, I'm very upset that China's upset at Japan being upset at China, what China's doing. Uh, this could go on forever. But um, yeah, it's kind of, it's very much like Russia as well. We're going to tell you the opposite of reality and uh, you should accept it. And uh, we'll be very upset if you, if you bring uh, Japan, to be fair, is not going on the full anti-China bandwagon that's really happening in America over a lot of things. But when they're in America, he, he knew what his audience was. And certainly Japan understands. I mean, they're, Japan is providing Coast Guard vessels to the Philippines because you can see these enormous Chinese Coast Guard vessels are sort of having their way with the, with the um, Filipino patrol boats. And so, you know, Japan sort of quietly helping. And, you know, all of these sort of all these islands and territories, which everybody's recognized as being Vietnam and Philippines and so on over these years. Now, now China's just stomping over it all. So um, and yeah, it's the same situation as in Europe. If you suddenly decide that all the borders are up for grabs, then, you know, you really are going to have um, real like hot wars. And uh, J Japan's philosophy is quite rightly that, um, you know, if you make the other guy think that there's, you know, if you, if you have enough deterrence, then everybody wins, including the aggressors, because, you know, prosperity is generally good for people. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it's pretty, um, but China's still upset that Japan would bring that up. Uh, <laughs> uh, the total eclipse in the US was 4 minutes 27, uh, whereas Bonnie Tyler's total eclipse of the heart is 4 minutes 30 uh, seconds long in the radio edit. Well, there we go. I, I, I think coincidence, I think not. I think not well spotted there, Kerber Stenshi. Uh, and uh, all that stuff, all the, all, all the crickets went quiet. Um, I couldn't tell if they went quiet or not in Tokyo because it's Tokyo, but there we go. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, back into what doesn't upset China nowadays. Indeed. Uh, somebody, a specific request, wanted me to mention the uh, Myaku Myaku shoes. So Myaku Myaku, of course, the, um, the, the mascot of Osaka, uh, of the Osaka Expo, which I think is happening 2026 or is it next year even? I don't know. It's coming up. So they made these running shoes. And honestly, I've got these hawker shoes that have these big sort of cool like rubber bases and so on. And they look a bit like this. They look not unlike this. And if it didn't have like the eyes on it, I'd actually like be game for the sort of, uh, you know, to, the, these look like they could be a proper running shoe. However, uh, when um, uh, Mizuno put out the sort of inspiration for these designs, they did uh, include um, how Myaku Myaku itself looks and how they tried to convert this into a shoe design. And I wasn't really aware that uh, Myaku Myaku's butthole is actually an eyeball. So well spotted. Um, Queen of Gaijin Twitter, Gaijin Mami. Uh, the I, 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 eyeball butthole is just too much. I mean, again, it's Osaka. This is just what Osaka sort of does. They they, they see things that uh, most people don't see. I mean, it's not only the fact that there's an eyeball there, but you have to think, I mean, what does it see? 
<laughs> Would you want to have an eyeball down there? I mean, I suppose it could come in handy sometimes, but it could it could also honestly. I mean, you're probably going to need counselling for that. I don't know. You're just going to have to figure out how to wink a lot, I guess. So that's a thing. But the shoe design is actually kind of cool. But um, oh crap! How do I go back? Go back. Here we go. So yes, indeed, the Miyaku Miyaku uh, running shoe design. I I don't know what what do you all think. The mascot's creepy. I, I kind of think it's original. It feels like every mascot lately is kind of the same. So uh, I'm all for this. Uh, we've got twice six. Junenburi ni Hiko-san no doga kimashita. Mecha ego hayakute wakaranai. Oh, I'm sorry, TWA6. Well, I'm glad that you were with us for the first time in uh, 10 years. And welcome back. I'm sorry I'm speaking quickly. It is uh, as late at night here in Australia. So I'm talking quietly and fast. あ、なんか、ジュニアブリにな、動画来てくれてありがとうございました。早く喋ってて、ごめんね、なんかあの、こっちオーストラリア、今オーストラリアで夜遅くて人を起こさないように、あの、早口で、ボソボソ喋りし
uh, some other people commenting, and the guy here is pretty good form. I mean, I don't think any of the times I did it, I've had that good form. In fact, yeah, I've never had that solid of form. True that, indeed. <laughs> people did it, but they were out in the countryside. Somebody here judging me a little bit, always a white man with fragile masculinity, trying to prove he's something that he's not. Uh, yes, that's exactly what I was doing. Now I feel bad about it. Thank you, Bruno Tom. Uh, this person says that they can say that they've uh, that they've never done it before, to which I say congratulations. So yes, a lot of interesting reactions to this today. But uh, that's just a thing that happens. People do this on the trains. Shouldn't do it. Don't do it. I did it. Don't be me. Be, 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 be whoever that person is who responded, who said that they've never done it before and they feel able to condemn them. Oh, I can't do that. I, 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 that's uh, way too much on all of them. Uh, also, somebody, uh, Callisto Roll, a sort of a parody account, actually with audio and everything, with train noise and conversation, picked out a fantastic speech and made it between two gaijins uh, condemning each other, basically, on their monotony line about, you ruined it, we had a good thing going and you ruined it. And I'm not going to say that they look like me, but I cer it certainly it, it hit me right here uh, watching this. I felt personally attacked by this. It's very, very well done. So you should uh, check out my Twitter and go check out these videos. The internet has been working hard both on condemning uh, <laughs> and condemning the condemnation of this misbehavior by foreigners on the train. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, I think I saw um, one of the people responding into a conversation, a New Zealander, uh, somewhere here in the comments, but I'll, hopefully I'll get to the topic, but just so, before I forget, uh, New Zealander who's lived in Japan, now back in Japan as a tourist, and I mentioned, please be sure to enjoy the toilets. Uh, a recent survey from tourists, 80% of tourists uh, found the uh, Japanese toilets like one of the highlights of Japan and one of the things that they most want to take back to their home country, which is why I brought back these portable Toto 4,300 yen or something, about 4,000 yen for these portable hand wash lips, which I've been, I've been using like, like crazy. Um, they, they are not the same. They're not as powerful. They do not have all the features of a built-in wash lip, but that's, that's going to be hard to, and expensive to install in a Western toilet uh, home. But basically, just just a way, just being clean, you know. Just if you have the miyaku miyaku eyeball, you know, you just don't want it to be. You just don't want to traumatize it, right? You want to have a nice, clean image of the world. So um, uh, that is it. You can't get clean. Uh, it's 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 like the old Toto TV commercial. They originally advertised it by putting like acrylic paint all over your hands and showing that if you wipe it with a dry towel, you'll never get it all off. But if you spray your hand with water and you wipe it, it gets clean why isn't this normal? Plus, of course, the fact that the toilets here, not a big problem in Queensland, it's pretty warm here, but in winter, going to New Zealand and it's, the toilet seats are cold, like, it's like you really have to go to the toilet, you really have to go to the toilet, and you sit down and the seat is so cold, you get constipated again. Um, so the heated toilet seats are also a very, very big deal, and just the things that you can't live without once you've experienced them in Japan, so there you go. Important stuff, speaking of important stuff, Mr. Steve Miller, the I used to say the voice of America, but I mean, you're not just the voice of America. You are voice of America. <laughs> yeah, great, great, as always, to have you back in the chat, Mr. Miller. Uh, and I uh, hope the world is going good for you. Uh, and uh, yes, indeed. Uh, hope, hopefully you didn't. Uh, I am totally not the type. I don't want you to think that uh, I would be the type of person that would hang from the um, supports and the trains, even though I've totally done that before. Uh, but welcome back into the chat as usual. Um, so yes, TWA mentioning as well. Washlet to no benza no hita nihon no hokori desu. Yes, Japanese definitely proud of their heated toilets and definitely. I mean, Japan if they can export Toyotas, surely they can export more heated toilet seats. I, th I think that would almost be. I mean, if Hyundai, you know, if Japan isn't isn't making the best cars anymore, if you know. Uh, computer monitors, big screen TVs, if they can't do that, Japan is still killing it on toilets, so they should definitely do that. Uh, so yes, uh, continuing on, we've got eight more minutes, so we've got to speed it up. The uh, editorial sort of pointing out that, yeah, Kishida did a lot of platitudes, signed a lot of documents, said we're besties with America, trying to lock in. Everyone's a little bit worried, of course, about Trump coming back in, just from the perspective that Trump's very isolationist. He's not interested in doing things with international partners. Um, he was generally sort of, you know, reducing spending on defense and so on. And, and, and 
and not paying so much attention to previous sort of commitments. So from that perspective, there is a bit of a rush from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to lock in things with America to make sure that, you know, there's stuff that can't be rolled back, assuming that they wouldn't be able to make. I mean, frankly, I think if they're being honest, they're all afraid that Biden's going to lose and uh, they're not going to be able to do anything with America. So they're trying to do as much as they can with the administration right now, which is good, I suppose, for Biden as well, because it lets... Uh, you know, gives them an opportunity to score some wins. But I don't know that that much substantive came out. Um, I mean, you know, good to see. He was, and honestly, Kishida shouldn't even be the prime minister. He should have been voted out just by his own party a long time ago. Even his own party hates him. So he's sort of holding on for dear life. I think when he gets back, this was really the only thing that he was holding on for. So uh, I think when he gets back, there's going to be probably a change of leader very soon. Um, So, um, yeah. Um, Dan H, for overseas market, uh, Toto put a crazy overcharge for us. The top end model in the UK, it's £11,000. Worth it. <laughs> I mean, is it worth it? You don't have to pay that much in Japan. The overcharge is ridiculous. Um, and you've got the installer fees and so on. So that is a shame, but um, but yes, indeed. £11,000, that is how I also react. I mean, but I must say, it's, it's like when I got a Herman Miller chair. Um Herman Miller chairs are ridiculously expensive. I got mine secondhand. It was like more than 10 years old and I spent more than $700 on it. But it's still worth it because um, sitting, when I, especially during when the pandemic started, I got this chair. It's because it's a chair you're going to sit. I was working from home. I was spending most of my day sitting in this chair working. Um, and there are some things, if you're going to spend a lot of time, you know, there are things that are important to spend money on in life. And it's a bit like I don't own a car, but to me it was a substitute for buying a car. I don't know. I think toilets are pretty important when you think about it. I don't. Eleven thousand pounds is is still crazy, but I, I do think in the context it's worth. Like if you think about how important how important is it to you to poop, <laughs> it's pretty important if you really think about it. As much as we we, we, we laugh and joke about it, it's pretty important in the end of the day. Um, so I, I think getting a good for the things to spend the money on there. Are, there are more stupid ways that you could spend eleven thousand uh, pounds than a toto. But I agree that is that is excessive. Uh, is it made of diamonds? I hope not. That wouldn't be very comfortable. I want it to. Uh, that's more fit for a king. Yes, indeed. Uh, so, continuing on. Uh, uh, five minutes. Uh, easy. Yokohama voted the most desirable place to live in Japan. I often get asked this question. What are the most desirable places to live in Japan? And I think or Yokohama, I would say myself. Why don't I live in Yokohama? They do have like... Um, uh, they don't have free health care for kids down there, that they, which is one reason we didn't move down there, but um, for lifestyle and, and people from Yokohama are sort of proud of it. O- Omiya comes second, Saitama, but Omiya is just a bed town for people who commute to Tokyo. You don't get people bragging that they're from Saitama so much. People kind of make fun of it as sort of the bed town neighborhood outside of Tokyo, but Yokohama people are like, yeah, I don't need to go to Tokyo. Screw Tokyo. Yokohama is better and it's got everything. So yeah, I, I kind of... I understand Yokohama getting there. And of course, it is the number two city in Japan, not Osaka. So there you go. Um, slightly awkward thing. Apparently, I didn't realize that Japan's ground uh, self-defense forces, uh, there is a regiment of the ground self-defense forces that has a Twitter account. And rather than sticking to the usual uh, tweeting uh, anime idols and uh, stuff like that, they uh, somewhat unfortunately decided to tweet uh, they made a reference to the Greater East Asian War um, on their account, which is, uh, as you may or may not know, the Japanese Empire, when it was expanding and taking over Asia, was sort of describing uh, the, the whole campaign to take over Asia as Japan uh, liberating uh, everyone from European colonization and creating a Greater East Asia prosperity sphere. Uh, where everybody would be uh, better off and free uh, under Japanese domination. And uh, he, at least, I suppose, calling calling the, the World War II the Greater East Asia War, it's like the first half of the Greater East Asia co-prosperity sphere. They, t- they took the co-prosperity sphere part off it because some people disagree with that. But the Greater East Asia, it sounds like that's the way they're still thinking. So they got a little bit uh, condemned on that. Um, Aussie in Japan showed a video of how something uh, everybody knows is made. Uh, this was somewhat alarming. In fact, <laughs> Oh god, if they show this, it's sort of like... Oh, I... I'm put that back. Plot twist at the end. It, looked, it definitely looked like it was for something else. So uh, anyway, that was kind of funny. Um, 
Yeah, um, Shohei Otani's interpreter has agreed. Uh, apparently, he stole more than four point five million dollars. They're now saying that he stole like eleven million dollars from Otani. He stole a lot, and he used it for gambling. So the court has uh, ordered him to go and get gambling addiction treatment. Uh, is he gonna go? I don't know. Want to bet? <laughs> uh, that was my that was my bad taste uh, gambling addiction joke of the day. Um, had great fun hanging out at uh, Netherworld and uh, thanks to Dimitri and Viv who came out had a great time hanging out and chatting with you both um, and also uh, with Nick who I met separately a couple of days before um, looking forward to seeing at the moment uh, Insta360 is promoting an 8k camera which I'm hoping is the 360 camera that I use and I'm pro probably going to unless it's unless it's ridiculous I'm probably going to go for this because I love my um, my camera so much uh, which I make videos like the one that you can see here um, in fact, if I, boom, 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 boom. so boom. here is the point that, uh, I'm shooting everything in all directions, but I, I'm only actually showing a segment of that overall video. So if you're shooting 8k everywhere, I'm not using 8k for the video that I take out of it, but that video is going to be like HD, which would be pretty awesome. So that is what I'm looking forward to. Um, oh yeah, I didn't mention Iran-Israel. How do Japanese think about the Iran-Israel war? Well, so the foreign ministry did formally condemn, uh, Iran of course launched 300 missiles, drones, uh, cruise missiles at Israel today, um, which Israel and the United States and Jordan um, or helped to shoot down. Uh, only one actually apparently reached its target, of a, a, a base in southern Israel. So Japan condemned uh, the attack. Uh, by Iran. Generally speaking, um, Japan is very um, sympathetic to Arab countries and they don't really have many ties to Israel. So um, on the one hand, so when, when it's something that the US is sort of very, feels very strongly about with Israel, the Japan will generally be quiet but will lean towards the sort of global hey, concern about what's happening with Palestinians and so on. And Japan does a lot of funding for a lot of the UN agencies that do work in the occupied territories. Um, so in terms of the Israel Palestine conflict, uh, Japan is fairly low key. Of course, Japan has produced a lot of um, pro-Palestinian terrorists as well, the Japan Red Army. Uh, they have that history. And, and generally, the protests in Japan that you see, there's, there's, there's protests, Japan's far left, generally is very pro-Palestine. In terms of Iran, it's interesting. Japan does, of course, get oil from Iran. Or the, I think they've only just very, even when US put sanctions on, Japan got an exception that they could still keep buying oil from Iran. So it's another thing. Japan's always been reluctant. They've always sort of maintained good relations with Iran. But in the current case, I mean, the context is, of course, and uh, Sadiq, I don't want us to get into any disagreements over this, but, you know, I mean, um, Iran has been attacking, they've been supplying and more or less directing the, the you know, um, Hezbollah and the Houthis to basically, you know, fire missiles at Israel all along. So Israel, you know, uh, attacking the um, uh, Iranian military advisors in Syria was part of the context of Israel sort of doing something about how Iran was directing the attacks, you know, sort of through proxies. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, um, this idea, this is the first time Iran's at attacked them directly. And Iran immediately said, okay, we're done. We're not going to do any more. And Israel said, no, 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 it's not over. I, I think it's in everyone's interest, by the way, not to escalate this and not to go any further. I hope that Israel doesn't do anything more. Um, the fact that Iran got to put on a big show, um, I think everyone's hoping that it's over. Um, but yeah, to the extent the foreign minister put out a fairly neutral statement saying that they, you know, um, condemning Iran for its attack. But maybe it's a good thing for everybody, including Iran, that um, is pretty amazing actually how well the Iron Dome and the Arrow system work to take those down. But I certainly hope that that doesn't escalate uh, in any direction, actually. But yeah, Iran, of course, is not an Arab country indeed. Uh, Persia is not. And that's part of the reason Israel had good relations with, uh, Israel itself had great relations with Iran, at least until the Islamic re Revolution. But um, yeah, it was part of, um, yeah, not wanting, I, I hope I didn't say that it was an Arab country. It's not what I meant, but in terms of the Middle East conflict, of course, uh, Persia does sponsor proxy groups, including in Arab countries. But yeah, yeah. Uh, in any case, uh, it's kind of maybe for the best. Iran got to fire 300 rockets at Israel and Israel got to more or less make sure its systems worked. So hopefully they'll, they'll lift it there, but uh, we'll see. Uh, you find that Israel has been pushing uh, the effort for uh, Hasbara diplomacy uh, in Japan. Uh, 
has been pushing an effort for Hasbro. I don't understand what you mean by uh, Hasbro diplomacy in Japan. Yeah, but generally, um, generally speaking, um, Japan plays a slightly um, le- more pro. Uh, and by the way, the Erin um, asking addiction treatment was it for Pachinko? No, this is the advisor to Otani who used it apparently for bet- for sports betting in California. Uh, so it's, this is in America, I believe he's been prosecuted and he needs to, to take treatment. And yeah, just uh, in terms of Japan and Middle Eastern issues, um, you're, so yes, Japan is uh, both pro-Iran generally, sympathetic to Iran, and also sympathetic to its oil suppliers, uh, to, to, to the to sort of Arab countries. Uh, that's what I said. I said Japan is pro-Arab, and you're right. Iran is not Arab. But in terms of the Middle East, it generally doesn't have much incentive. Japan doesn't have many ties with Israel. Uh, it only recently just up- upgraded those ties. So that's that's the overall context. Not not a lot happening. Uh, Japan kind of keeps arm's length and does stuff more in the background anyway. Um, so yeah, and indeed I also hope hope that it doesn't escalate. Uh, Akebono, uh, Yokozuna, the first ever non-Japanese um, uh, Yokozuna, which is an interesting one. I I would bet money. I, I'm pretty sure that there have been Yokozuna like Korean Yokozuna, maybe during the Japanese Empire when they were Japanese citizens who have been Yokozuna before, but certainly the first foreign citizen. Uh, Yokozuna, Chad Rowan, uh, Akebono passed away, 54 years old. Um, again, another just indication of how much of a toll the sport takes and the way that they have to eat and train and so on, uh, the toll it takes on the body. But still, 54 is uh, terribly young. So very, very sad to hear about that. Michael Pickett, glad that you could make it. Welcome into the chat. Hasbro, uh, he refused. Uh, Hebrew phrase, meaning uh, seeks to explain actions, whether or not they are justified. Um yeah, but even, okay, even with that, with, thank you for the explanation, which I was not familiar with, by the way, Hasbro diplomacy in Japan. Um, uh, I mean, Israel is trying its best, but honestly, Japan just doesn't have strong ties with Israel generally, uh, but it does have strong ties with America. So it kind of, I think it kind of sits neutral because of that. Um, but yeah, is, is, is Israel stuff working? I think it's working to the extent that no one wants to see, um, you know, countries attacking each other. I mean, it's bad enough when they're attacking each other by proxies. I mean, even, but 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 a direct attack is is a bad thing in both directions. So yeah, uh, but Japan's been neutral anyway to answer the question. Um, so uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much I got through all, pretty much all the topics. The yen got to 153 yen to the dollar, although some people, as I'm telling everyone, go to Japan right now because the yen is 153 to the US dollar. It's crazy cheap. But at the same time, hotel prices and airfares, because of all the tourists, have gone up. So for the things that a tourist would spend most of the money on, Japan is apparently still incredibly expensive right now uh, for tourists. Um, well, well, once you're done with the hotel and the flight, go to the convenience store and you can have an onigiri for like $1 instead of like $10 or whatever they're charging for onigiri. It has been interesting being here in Australia, by the way. In Australia, I've noticed like Japanese food. I was at an uh, Eat Street in Brisbane tonight, which is like a street food, sort of huge um, sort of theme park. And they had Japanese, they had all the Japanese like ramen and stuff like that. And yeah, it was all, I don't know, $20 or whatever. Like America, it's like $30, $40. Australia is like $20. It still is overpriced for me. I wouldn't want to pay what they pay for it here, especially knowing it's not going to be as good. But it's not as outrageous as America here in Australia. But stuff in Australia is still also uh, overpriced from my perspective. But yeah, the yen is continuing to get uh, crazy. Um, oh, and the final story for the night, promised this toilet story idea. We've already talked a bit about toilets, but yes, the tourist uh, toilet survey results are in. 80% of tourists visiting Japan want washlet toilets with heated seats installed in their home countries. Touristic pooping in Japan is transforming the lives and aspirations of millions. Thank you, Cole Cameron. Um, yes, uh, Japanese toilets are inspiring the world, and maybe, maybe this is a solution for the Middle East, perhaps. Just sending everybody toilets will just... Uh, uh, I don't know, poss- possibly help, <laughs> could make it worse. <laughs> okay. I suppose you th- when you talk about messages that could be misinterpreted. <laughs> but seriously, if you're not a washlet, you know, you should appreciate that. Maybe, maybe attach a post-it and if it makes you angry, throw it away. So we- I think we've wrapped up the story. Invest in Toto. Uh, yeah, Toto's the future so long as they don't keep selling them for 11,000 pounds. Jeez, seriously? Um, and they're just asking for some Chinese toilet brand <laughs> to come in and take over the market if they charge like that. Uh, this has been going for over an hour, but as always, it's been fun. Thanks for keeping me company during the pre-show. Thanks for keeping me company during this show. Uh, sorry about the echoey room. Uh, I'll be back in my normal uh, back cave. 
uh, next week back in Japan. But um, yeah, yeah, it's been fun. It's actually been fun doing this on the road. Uh, Dan H, I'm glad that Japan was crazy cheap for you. Toilet wars coming. <laughs> Maybe that's what they send. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, who knows? Uh, but uh, thank you, everybody, as always. Uh, and uh, definitely enjoyed my time here in Australia. I'm very glad I was able to do this show. Um, maybe better than I was able to do it in America. So lessons, uh, progress. So yeah, um, remember, you can always follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all the things. And uh, I'll be in Sydney for the rest of the week and then back to Japan. So I'll see you soon. And boom, peace. Enjoy the butter while I can. Yes, I will. And uh, congrats on everybody who enjoyed. It sounds like you had some great eclipse experiences there in the chat very jealous so i uh, good on you for all of that and uh, yeah see you all soon boom toyota collabs with finland there we go now forget about toyota maybe maybe instead of sending the the um the the toyota to the moon maybe they should be sending toyota toilets to the moon and you know maybe they and, and pushing to captain the mission based on that they can actually make that the commander seat the possibilities are endless Okay, I'm ending the stream now. See you all later. Boom. See ya.